yesterday, 1am uh, our time in the UK, 10am in Australia, my one of my best friends buried her 17 year old son who was killed in a car accident and it was, the, the service was amazing it was beautiful um the pain for the family is still just just so raw but the reason i'm sharing this with you is because i know when i've been through my deepest darkest moments when my dad was dying when my marriage was breaking up um which was pretty much consecutively i found that exercise strangely enough made the biggest difference it helped to take the acid or dilute some of that acid that was already literally cutting through my soul and it, it was at 1am my time last night um i got to sleep for about half past three i think it was at 10 a.m. in Australia because, of course, they've still got restrictions over there. Um, my friends from the UK, her husband is from the UK. None of their family were able to be there because of the restrictions. And so um, this, uh, this, this company organises a literally amazing virtual service so that we could all take part. We could all be there as part and parcel to, sh to um, say farewell to Barney. And the i mean for the 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 grief is still just so real and so raw for that family and it's going to take a long time before time starts to heal those wounds um but when you've moved or when you're moving through that literally crushing grief and crazy enough somehow I mean, you always want the world to just stop turning when you lose somebody that's so dear to you. And in such a sudden way as well, you just want to shout to everybody, just stop and listen and remember. And of course people don't, because a lot of people don't even know about it. But when you're trying to process that grief and the anger and the frustration and the despair and the disbelief, all those psychotherapeutic stages of grief, um, it kind of, it, it, I thought when people write about grief, I mean, those stages are pretty much, they're real. People pass through them in different phases, but um, it sort of just takes away the importance of, of the memory of that beloved person. I, before I went through my really tough times, I couldn't understand why people would do emotion, emotional harming couldn't understand it. how could somebody cut themselves to take away that emotional pain and it wasn't until I my dad was dying and he had multiple myeloma for 10 years and the latter couple of years were really tough plus uh he wasn't getting an awful lot of support from his wife at the time not my mum by the way um and it was just it was it was awful for him and then obviously on top of that, my marriage was failing. That was really awful. And there were moments when I could understand why people would take a, a knife and just cut their skin to just, because that emotional pain is just so, so crushing and so raw and acidic and just, you, words don't, you, you can't, you can't describe it with words. Um, but the one thing that kept me going, and I never, I never self-harmed, never ever self-harmed. The one reason I'm convinced I never did is because of exercise. And it's what I did this morning. You know, if it was my son that I'd lost, I would still be in a complete, I would be, I don't know, it would be, I'd still be in a massive case of disarray and craziness. But as somebody who has felt that grief, seen the grief, just, been part of that beautiful service last night it's just it's emotionally especially as a mother it's just crushing to see the pain that's been left in that family because of Barney's loss and um I have I press play it's the only thing I could do it's the only thing I know how to do in order to let some of the steam some of that 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 pent up whatever it is energy out in a positive way so the reason I'm sharing that with you is because, first of all, 
hug those that you love so hard because you never know when your last day is up. You don't know if it might be yours, you don't know if it might be theirs. So live every day as though it's your last day. But also, if you are going through those awful periods of time, understand they will pass as the time goes on, whether you want that to happen or not. I think it's sometimes you want to hang on to the, the grief because you don't want life to move on without that beloved person as a physical part of your life. But if you're thinking of taking the pills, doing the self-harm, hitting the bottle, doing whatever it is as, as, a, as an alternative way of dealing with it, move your body because it gobbles up those stress hormones and it just, it doesn't take the grief away, but it just helps you defrazzle a little bit. It just helps to dilute that acid that's running so deep through that wound that's torn your soul apart. Whew, try and hang, hang, hold it together, um, but it works. And yes, it does give you feel good hormones. Um, I can't honestly say I feel like I'm flooded with them right now, but I do feel like I'm on a more even keel today. And uh, now, now that I've done that workout, whatever you do, however you do it, whatever suits you, but it, you will find it will make a massive difference to how you um, get on with your life. And it might be the difference between you doing something that is going to hurt you even more compared to doing something that's going to help just pull you back from that brink. And also, if you're if you're a parent, you've got to kind of function for your others. You've got to be there. There isn't a choice. You've you've got to be there to maintain the thread that weaves the family of yours together. So. Um, I hope that helps. Just wanted to share my two pennies worth with you. Um, and just know that it does gradually get better. My, um, actually, the day that Barney's funeral yesterday would, would be my cousin's 20, 54th birthday. Uh, we lost her when she was 26. And again, a bit like Barney, she was one of those people that was the brightest star, the brightest light the beautifulest soul, the most giving personality, one of those uh, sparkle people. <sighs> Life just seems to be very unexpected at times. I just hope that when we, we find our way up top, whatever your beliefs are, that um, it all gets revealed to us, this greater plan that as naive human beings we were just not aware of, but that there's some sense in all this complete madness. So. Love those, hug those that you love. Hug them so hard and um, make the most of every bloody day while you've got it. <laughs>